I did say I was coming back to the league, but I, I, I didn't say if I was going to be with the Riveters, so. You didn't know who he was? Don't worry about it. It's just locker room time. Hey guys, welcome to Locker Room Talk. It is our first ever episode. We've got a lot we want to talk about. Um, I'm Eleni Demestahas, also known as Strong Forecheck, and this lovely dancing friend of mine is Gamer Doc. Hello. Hello, Eleni. Thank you for having me on our show today. Uh, I look forward to many of a Tuesday spent longingly in matching shirts. So thank you for having me join you t today. Thank you for wearing a matching shirt. I think mm -hmm. we really... We really nailed it. We crushed it. This is the spirit of the show. Um, matching button-ups worn by ladies. If you don't know what Locker Room Talk is going to be about, that's what it's going to be about, ladies and gentlemen, right there. That's the, vibes. that's the vibe. That's the show, actually. I think we can leave now. Literally just vibing mm -hmm. in Hawaiian shirts. That's it. It may not seem like we have a format or like we have a flow uh, because we're so natural with what we do. But this show is going to be organized into certain ways. Every week we're going to talk about hockey news. We're going to do some weird stuff because why not? And then we're going to have a guest. So today our guest is Soraya Tinker. More about her later in the show. But first up on news, the Riveters have rebranded, Eleni. What do you think about it? I have a lot of thoughts. I do really like it. I actually, mm -hmm. I'm going to be completely honest, did not even occur to me that it was like a non-racial logo until I saw someone else talk about it. I was just like, oh, cool. Different Rosie looks cool. And then someone was like, she looks like a robot. And I was like, <laughs> not really. And then someone else was like, tweet thread about what this means to have a non-racial mascot. And I was like, dude, I didn't even think about it. And like, that's my privilege, right? Like, because yeah. I'm a white person and every single logo looks like me, except for the really racist ones. So yep. for the first time in my life, I got to sit there and be like, that's on purpose. And it's cool. I think it's really cool. It's not Black Rosie. So it's not like maybe the coolest it could be, but it is super cool. I wonder who they consulted with to like, so how do you make a logo that doesn't look white without making it offensive, right? Like, cause we all know Disney, Disney did that thing for a long time. How do you make a logo that doesn't look white? I want to know who they talked to and who they spoke to and who they consulted with and who made the, I would love to know. the logo. So if you, you know, even... let us know in chat. Yeah, we want to know. We want to know. Tweet at us. We just want to talk. At Locker Room Talks. Rolls talk off. Talk X. Talk X, sorry. X. <laughs> sorry, this is my first show. New signings, you know, we're, we're leading up to the new season. The draft is next week. More about that at the end of the show. Um, there are some new signings. Obviously, Michaela Grant Mentis re-signed with the T6. You would have to be an idiot to not re-sign Michaela Grant Mentis. She is arguably going to be the best player in the league every year until someone else shows up, until Lenny and I decide we're going to rejoin professional hockey. Um, any other new signings you want to talk about? Yeah, so the Whale are really not messing around and they have gone out and gotten kennedy marchment who is a canadian player who has been playing in the swedish league and she is just a monster in the best possible way i she love drives monsters. play offensively she scores crazy goals she's she's aggressive on the puck she's gonna be so exciting to watch and like for years we've been saying the whale really needs a superstar the whale really needs a superstar they got her okay and I'm ready. I also know about this person, and I'm very excited for her she's to great. be a monster in the league. Just trust so. me. She's great. I, I, oh, my God. I trust you in my life. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. About that. oh, my God. Okay, maybe not. Speaking of monsters, that's a transition that doesn't work. Uh, the salary cap in the league went up, which is monster great. Size. Monster size. Oh, my God. It's like in Space Jam when they go from those little cute things to those big things. For sure, it's exactly like that. I've definitely seen that movie that you're referencing. Oh my god, I forgot how young you are. Okay, anyways, back to my mortality. So the salary cap went up from $1,500 to $300,000 for a 20-player roster. It is not the salary cap of the NHL. It is not the salary cap of the WNBA. But it is a doubling of the salary cap. So that's pretty cool. What do you think about that? 
I guess the way that I would structure it is that the rookies would probably get paid the least unless I was like really worried about them going to a different team. Yeah. And then there would be like a lockstep for how many years you've been around. So presumably you've got your superstars at the highest tier and then you've got your vets at the second highest tier. And then you've got like everybody else trying to either get to the superstar tier or to stick around long enough to get to the vets tier. Because that way then you're incentivizing people to stick around. Perfect. Perfect. I love it. It's like we should start a team. Where would we put a team? In D.C., Washington, D.C.? Yeah, I guess we'd have to. You want to come there. hang out? Yeah, why not? Dude, I got an extra side room. It's not a bedroom. It's it's almost a closet, but you seem like the low maintenance type of guy. I live in Boston, so I pretty That's much true. already live in a closet. Speaking of avoiding the closet, the NWHL has announced a new partnership, this one with Athlete Ally. This is a nonprofit athletic advocacy group focused on making athletic communities more inclusive and less discriminatory. If you want the TLDR of this, it means advocating for trans men and women in sports because last time I checked on the gay agenda, ruining sports is not on it. So let trans people play. Um, so big step for the NWHL. Eleni, what are your thoughts on this? I think it's great. I think um, especially we're seeing in other women's leagues, um, players start to come out as trans and be able to like play and it's chill and it's fine. And the sports are not ruined. Actually, as it turns out, the sports are better because everyone feels like they're welcome and it's awesome. So the NWSL has two, um, I believe both of them are non-binary. They use they, them pronouns, totally chill. Um, really cool to have people advising the NWHL on how to become the kind of league where that's the vibe. That's the vibe we want. Last question. Does this feel reactionary to what was uncovered about Toronto 6 a couple of months ago, or does this feel organic? I think it's a little bit of both. I think it would be a little bit foolish of me to say that it doesn't have anything to do with what happened before. Um, part of me feels like maybe I believe they were going to get to this eventually and this make it a priority. Um, but it does definitely, I mean, clearly it's at least in some way brought on by what happened before. Um, and, and honestly, in the realm of reacting to it, this is kind of the best case scenario to me. At least they're like actually talking to trans people about what would make our league inclusive instead of being like, we changed some words. Imagine, imagine having people yeah. in the room when the policies you're creating affect so them. Weird. Would be I don't know so weird. weird. I don't know. Seems seems unrealistic. Seems weird. Well, uh, you know, it is Pride Month. This will be our only show in Pride Month because we are doing a live NWHL draft show next week. In that regard, we have a short commercial from one of our sponsors coming up. So be you sure pay very close attention to it. Yes, very, and take one notes if you can. Um, very important. It's, it, you know, it's not easy to make a podcast. Luckily, you know, so we had to take some money from some people we didn't super support. But, um, you know, you got to keep the lights on. So we will be back shortly with a guest after this message from our sponsors. New product alert. Down Under Canoe Hunting and Everything presents Straight Pie Tape. Tired of people bringing their politics onto the ice? Straight Pie Tape. Does the sight of rainbows make you physically ill? Straight Pie Tape. Have you ever been given a penalty for taking off your skates and trying to stab a guy? Straight Pie Tape. Do you have very close ties to the alt-right? Straight Pie Tape. For the low cost of $8.88, this could be you. Only comes in one color for obvious reasons. Warning, use of products makes your friends and coworkers hate you. Homophobia included. Sexism sold separately. Hi, guys. Our very first guest ever is Soroya Tinker. You know her. You love her. If you don't know her, you will love her. She is a Canadian defender. Um, she has her own mentorship program called Soroya Strong. So you should definitely follow her on every single social media yes. outlet and make sure that you're paying attention to Soroya Strong and the other ways in which she provides mentorship. Um, she works with Black Girl Hockey Club Scholarship Program too, which is awesome. She also paints in case, you know, she didn't have enough talent yet. Um, so you will see her paintings and stuff on her Instagram. We're gonna chat with her a little bit today about all sorts of stuff. You never know what you're gonna get. So. You never know. Here so we go. Let's do it. So let's welcome Sora Tinker, our very first guest to Locker Room Talk. Sora Tinker, welcome to our show. You are our very first guest. We are so pumped that you are here. Thank you for being here. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. I'm honored to be the first. Um, here at Locker Room Talk, we don't believe in small talk. Um, we do believe in foreplay. We can edit that out after. But um, first question, are you coming back to the league next year? Are you coming back to the NWHL? I am. I will be back. 
<laughs> Love that. When did you make that decision? Was it ever a question? Did you, were you was that always, you know, what was going to happen? Or would you mind walking us through a little bit of that thought process? Yeah, I, I think moving forward past the bubble, um, I definitely didn't get the full playing experience. And that was a little upsetting. And we want revenge. And I want an Isbell Cup under my belt. So I think that that would be a great way to do so is continue playing. So I'm excited to continue with the league and, and actually have a full season and show what I got. We talked about this a little bit earlier in our news section, but the Rivs have a new logo um it's kind of like the old logo but a little bit different somehow so what do you think about it Soraya? yeah i i definitely like the the new logo i i think the idea of making her her non-racial is definitely a, a big part of the riveters identity so i think that that'll be important for them to to kind of flourish off that and and make way for for other players on the team and and show what we're really about at the Riveters organization. Um, but yeah, I, I think the new logo is great and I'm, I'm excited to see it on, on the front of their chest. <laughs> I like a little bit of a confession to make, um, but I'm allowed to say it now, I, I guess. I heard they were gonna make Rosie like, not non-racial, but black. Yeah. A year ago. And that was what I was told but it was kind of like whisperings that I wasn't, and I'm probably not supposed to share, but this is locker room talk, whatever. Um, yeah. Is it a compromise though? Because, because like we have enough white mascots. We have enough white mascots. Like, can we just get like a, a, a non-aggressive and non-prejudicial Native American mascot? Probably not, right? Like, can we get a, a BIPOC mascot? Like. At what point is it not um, like inappropriate representation? And what point is it like representation? Yeah, well, I think given like the history of Rosie the Riveter, I think that um, I think, you know, I think she could be black uh, and I think it's perfectly reasonable. Um, I also think that if our league and our team is following along what we what we hold ourselves to our standards and our pillars of excellence and and what we actually want to you know, do as a team and, and present in the league and stand for, then I think that she could be black. I think that it's it's a definite offer, opportunity. And I definitely heard that the whisperings of them making her black as well, but we are seeing Steel Rosie this year, so. <laughs> I've heard is that Black Rosie is coming. Excited to hopefully see them actually do it, but I'm telling you, if they give me another season of being like, just wait, I'm gonna be like, no, you're, you, you're just pulling my leg at this point. I need to see it. I want it. And I don't want it like, I don't want like, like just like a black rosy like t-shirt. Give me, I want it on the jersey. It better be on the jersey. Like for real, go all the way with it. Yeah, I, I did say I was coming back to the league, but I, I, I didn't say if I was going to be with the Riveters. So um, I, I won't speak on that currently, but um, let's but, go. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Awesome. I just got I so excited. Drama. I'm so That's excited for the drama. The like one year contracts is that anything can happen. Anything Every can happen. single off season, it's like just literally anything could happen at any time. It's so we'll see. I just want to put chaos. that out there. If we were yeah. gonna continue talking about the ribs, but Yeah, I mean we don't have to talk about the ribs. We could talk about anyone. We could talk about any team you want, Soraya. What team do you want to talk about? <laughs> Any team you want, Sora, just off the top of your head. It's fine. It's totally fine. Um, I won't actually pressure you into doing that. But I think something um, that Sora mentioned earlier that I just want to double, triple, quadruple bring up is that Rosie the Riveter is based on a, um, a fictional but historical char character who worked in, you know, when the men went away to the wars, the women had to turn up and make sure America was still functioning and go to the manufacturing plants and what what happened was a lot of those women were people of color and they weren't all white women and so rosie the riveter being non-white is historically accurate and it's not like pandering and that's what that's what like when the nhl put out like the like their meager bone to black lives matters it was like it was like people were like you're pandering it's like no this is real life like yeah it's real life. The people who are sitting on your bench might not be, you know, completely representative. But the people who are watching are representative. Um, so it's not pandering. We're, we're not like doing these things for pandering. We're doing these things 
for real life, right? Like, am I am I lying? And that, that's how we grow the league too. So if we see yeah. Black Rosie on the front of our jersey, there's gonna be a bunch of black little black girls that want to play hockey, and I think that's what we want. That's what yeah. I want. Um, I know that my white counterparts may not pay attention to it, but that's something that I for sure pay attention to, and I'd love to see more black women in hockey. So I think making a Black Rosie would definitely yeah. implement change from the grassroots that we really want to see. Did you ever get approached to play outside the NWHL anywhere? Uh, yeah, I, I, I have. I considered playing in Europe, um, looked at the PWHPA, uh, but I think the NW kind of fit what I was trying to do and fit into my lifestyle. Um, just be because obviously as, as female hockey players, we don't have the luxury of just, you know, moving to a city and just playing hockey and just training for that. So I think that a lot of the girls have to find space to allow that into their life and to make sure that we can grow as women outside of hockey as well as, as be hockey players. So how much money should you be paid right now? Like, obviously, I'm not talking about the salary cap, the individual. We, we all know they're trying. Like, you can't just make something out of nothing. I'm not saying, like, the individual should be paying you more. I mean, should. But if you were to be paid a salary right now for your level of hockey playing and your level of influencing, how much money should your salary be right now if you were a dude? <laughs> I mean... I think as, as women, I think that we should all be making between 65 and 100 at the very least. That's living wage in now, in, in, in today's day and age. So I, I, that's what I would expect as a, as a woman and knowing that from the time I was five and not expecting to play hockey. But of course, if I was in, in the male game, I would definitely be striving for, for millions or, or whatever is yeah. up that they make. So we would like to make as much as say the WNBA girls make like Super yeah. and Tasha Cloud having those bigger contracts that still aren't even nearly close to what the men make but still significantly more than living wage if you had to pick between having like a longer contract like two or three year contract option or a one year contract that's more money which one would you pick um I personally would pick the, the, the couple year option just because I'm all about planning and I like to know where I'm going to be. But yeah. I, I think that's the other issue right now. A lot of us just have so much uncertainty and it doesn't allow us to focus fully on what we want to focus on and focus on improving our game, which is what we should be doing. <laughs> People always like watch women's hockey or, 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 or women's you know basketball and they make comments about how people look tired or they look slow. And it's like, dude, the NHL players train every single day, every every hour of every day, and are perform at that level. And these people are out here with full time jobs, yeah. with like training in their off season, and they look like that. Like, get on skates and show me, Janet. And, and some just had babies. We had a nursing room in the NWHL bubble for Brooke Stacy. Like the men don't have that. The men don't have to nurse in between periods and pump. You know, so I think that there's a lot more things that come into play as women. Like we've got different hormones. And of course, these are all things that we, we push past as women and still prove to be the badasses that we are. But at the same time, it is it is a lot for us. And if I could spend all day training, I would. But the reality is that I have people to cook for. I've got another job. I've got painting to do. I've got a lot of things. So in that sense, I, I think that if we were allowed to just solely focus on hockey and focus on ourselves, then you would see another level of play. Change one rule. And it doesn't have to be like based on the NWHL rule book. It can just be like one like generally accepted hockey rule. What would it be? Honestly, I think if I could change one rule in the women's game, I would allow hitting. So I don't know. I, There's probably been it. times in my career where I'm just you know at the point in that game you just you feel like your team just needs to see somebody just be laid out center ice you know yeah, yeah. And i got the size to do it but i'm not allowed so all right eleni we got time for one more question do you want to follow up with a one final one final question what sort of things do you wish people asked you more when they interviewed you because i feel like you've you've definitely gotten a lot of media attention which is so well deserved but I feel like I sometimes I read the same questions over and over again. And I want to know, what do you want to talk about? What do you wish people were asking you? <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a lot of repeated questions. And I, I think that my a lot of my answers are just 
the solid in my head now. I just feel like I read off the script. But um, I think I, I wish that people asked me probably more about my mentorship and how they could help in that sense. Um, maybe more about my family and where I come from. I've, I've got three brothers and I don't think a lot of people know that. I'm the only one that still, still plays at the level I do. I've got an 11 year old brother that loves hockey and is my biggest fan. But um, those are my roots and that's where I come from. And I think that's why I have the personality that I do and I'm able to be outgoing and as blunt as I, as I need to be because of the way my parents raised me. Are you the oldest? No, I have a 27 year old brother, then 23, 20, and then 11. <laughs> okay, cool. So you're kind of right in the middle. Yeah, I was old enough that I uh, didn't get beat up a lot, but there you go. are ganging up on me now. You're also That's strong fair. enough, so there's that. So yeah, I was gonna say I don't think anybody would try to beat you up. <laughs> so if if you were had to play against all three, all of your brothers in a hockey game, one of them could suit up as goalie, the other, the others had to wear regular hockey gear. How, could you beat them, and by how many points? In a uh, in a regulation match, like twenty minute period, three of them. It's really long. Yeah. yeah. I think that if it was me and my youngest brother on a team that played against my No, no, team. you versus everyone. Oh, me versus It's everyone. you versus all of your brothers. Oh, damn. Yeah, I definitely got that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you hear that, Sawyer's brothers? Come at us. And I'm oh. going to send them the link to the to this this video and so they can see it. I'm stamp it to let them know. <laughs> yeah, tell them. All right, well, that is like all of the time we have left in this short form hockey talk show um, called Locker Room Talk. Soria, you have been a pleasure. Um, is there any parting words you have for us? Any final things you want to say or do or promote except for the Soria Tinker Metrics program, which everyone should look up and go to on the Google donate machines and donate to it? Yeah, besides that, I mean, you can also talk about that, but I just wanted to give you that little plug right there. <laughs> Yeah, I think everyone should go follow Soroya Strong um, and also Soroya Tinker 71 on all social platforms um, and look forward to playing in this season and, you know, you all might have a new jersey to buy. <laughs> Let's do it. Wherever oh you go, we're going to be watching. <laughs> Let's end the episode on that because what is more mysterious than where will Soroya go? <laughs> Okay, okay, Eleni, we cannot let that... I, normally, we'd end the show right now because it's late. It's like 8.30. We all have to go to bed. Um, but we cannot let that interview die right there. Where is Soroya going? I mean, she could be going anywhere. That's the thing, is that, like, I don't... You're going to have to give me places that she couldn't be going. She's not going to the Pride. Right. So let's start with that. Uh, she's clearly not going to the Pride. I don't think she's going to Minnesota either. Why not? Um... I, I just, the vibe isn't right. I think uh, Wales a good option. Um, and they're not, they're not screwing around this off season. No. See, they are out for blood. Whales do not eat anything that has blood, just to be clear. Except um, for plankton. Plankton doesn't have blood. Well, whatever. Um, we're not, I'm a doctor, not a mather. What do you think about these? I can see it. I could see it. I could see her on the Buttes. Um, I think the Buttes would be a really good landing spot for her because I th I think they're going to lose Lenka and they're really going to need someone on defense who can be like very defensively responsible. Mm -hmm. CJ needs backup, right? Like, so CJ faced more shots than anyone else in the friggin' bubble up per game, and it wasn't, close. It, it wasn't even close, right? CJ was standing on her head, and that's why the Buttes did what they did. Um, CJ needs backup, so I would love to see her go to the Buttes. What about Toronto Six? And the only reason I don't think that's going to happen is because of the controversy surrounding Toronto Six and how outspoken Soroya is. What do you think about that? If she does go to the Six, it's it's her team now. You know what I mean? Like that becomes the Soroya Tinker team, and I think she knows that. Yeah, and she's got that. She's got that kind of attitude, and like maybe that would be the best thing for them, honestly. That's a great rebrand. Actually, that's a really good idea. Like, how do we get everyone to forget about that turf thing that happened? We're the Soroya Tinker team now, so you can't be mad at us. I mean, I mean, she, she, I it's, it will be good for Toronto. Soroya will help them figure their stuff out. Um, and, it, you know, they're 
going to be one of the best teams in the NBA show. So also, let's see. can you imagine the black excellence of a team with Soroya Tinker and Mikhail Grant on it? Because I don't think any of us are ready for that. I know. I want it. Oh my but God. I'm not sure I would survive. My body is ready. Well, all right. So enough speculation. Eleni, we need, this is airing Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, hit us up on Twitter. Eleni, we need a hashtag. Hashtag TinkerWatch2021. <laughs> hashtag TinkerWatch2021. Who is Soroyer going to? Uh, if you pick correctly, you might get something. You might not. Who's to say? This is locker room talk. I definitely have some some stickers that I can send you. You might get stickers. We're not sure what they're going to be of, but you might get stickers. Uh, yeah. uh, Eleni, this has been our first locker room talk. It has been incredible, but we are out of time. You know, this is a short firm hawker talking show. We're not here for hours and hours and hours. We've got things to do. Do you have any final parting words for anybody? Uh, I don't, but I want to know your opinions mm. on where Soraya is going to go. So, so tell us. Tell us. Tell us. And give us your reasoning. I want detail. I want, detail. I want an essay. So much detail. Five paragraph essay, thesis statement, rephrase your thesis statement, put three points in each one, restate them in the middle paragraphs. This has been Locker Room Talk. I am Gamer Doc. This is my wonderful co-host, Eleni Nemesta has. Um, thank you for tuning in. We will be here next week for the NWHL Draft. We will be live, actually, on Twitch, possibly on YouTube. We haven't quite figured that out yet. So tune in then. Have a wonderful evening, everyone. And, you know, keep, keep Locker talking, rooming. Yeah. Mm -hmm.